Before humans arrived, Earth maintained a balance between its millions of plant and animal species in the natural environment. There's always been an unspoken, mutual agreement that no species will conquer all others or drain the planet of its health for personal benefit. However, humans have disrupted this balance and broken this agreement. As a result of our species' exploitative polluting activities, the seas are rising, glaciers are shrinking, and weather is intensifying so that all of us, whether we directly contribute to this crisis or not, will soon experience the disastrous effects of climate change if we haven't already. It's well known that some of the wealthiest companies contribute most to climate change through their consumption of fossil fuels. On the opposite end of the responsibility spectrum, marginalized and low-income communities who contribute least to this crisis are by far the most affected. Regularly, these communities are silenced and their rights are violated as they speak out against the impacts climate change has on their livelihoods. Even in our own backyard, we've witnessed how developers use manipulative strategies to push lifelong residents out of Little Haiti in the process of climate gentrification. Bangladesh's CO2 emissions per capita numbered 0.5 metric tons in 2017, a significantly lower value than the global 2017 average of 4.73 metric tons per capita. This distinction shows how Bangladesh has a relatively minimal role in contributing to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Yes, as was previously mentioned, those who are least responsible face the greatest consequences. This holds true in the case of Bangladesh, where two-thirds of the country lies less than 5 meters above sea level, and by 2050, sea level rise will result in an estimated 15 million citizens having to evacuate their homeland as of dry, arable land. Though rising water levels will uproot millions of people in the coming years, some of Bangladesh's tribes, including the Saisanao tribe, have begun growing crops like squash, okra, gourd, and rice in rows of floating gardens. Rather than tend to plants with traditional tractors or land-based machinery, they do so with canoes instead, making this unconventional form of agriculture well-suited to last in spite of sea level rise. The floating garden beds themselves are created by stacking cow dung and silt to form the base, which makes the entire process of making and caring for the garden a very low-cost, non-polluting form of growing crops. As more land is projected to be submerged thanks to climate change and sea level rise, we can look to Bangladesh's tribes for an example of how to continue feeding ourselves while adapting to our changing environment and producing a negligible greenhouse gas footprint. Deforestation is a serious problem in Ecuador and Amazon because it alone contributes to 39% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Forests are essential to the indigenous community's livelihood, so cutting them down poses a threat to their culture and survival. These forests are protected in theory by the government, but the extraction companies got around this protection under the technicality that the indigenous communities own the territory and not the mineral resources in the soil. The Waurani tribe, led by their leader Nemonte Nenquino, fought in a lawsuit against the Ecuadorian government, which they wanted to allow them to keep their land. In the past, they have faced a lot of frustration since they were often dismissed as victims rather than activists advocating for their land. With the support of organizations, they made the indigenous people center for documentation, research, and information, and have been slowly been able to gain more credibility since they emphasized the link between climate change and their rights. Many of these communities also live in voluntary isolation, which has dramatically helped combat climate change since they live in a sustainable way. The Waurani people also sell chocolate, which they make using sustainable methods. The chocolate has helped raise awareness for the tribe and helps fund services in education, health, and efforts to protect their land's biodiversity. These practices are critical to the protection of these territories. Indigenous communities are affected disproportionately by climate change, although they contribute little to the crisis. Their climate change solutions are innovative and sustainable. We need to include diverse communities in our conversations about climate change. Only then can we approach this crisis in a way that helps everyone.